So a few videos back I showed a technique in Photoshop where you can really bring eyes to life using noise and the radial blur filter. Now not that I have an obsession with eyes but here's another technique I want to share with you that uses just one layer to brighten, colorize and add contrast. All right, so to start things off then, let's just zoom in a little bit closer on the eyes. I'm then gonna to go to the toolbar and get my elliptical marquee tool. Now, when I use the elliptical marquee tool, I need to hold down the shift key to constrain it as a perfect circle. You can see here on that dark area, when I just click and drag it without holding the shift key down, it kind of goes all over the place. But the minute I hold down the shift key, it constrains it as a perfect circle. Once I've got that, I can hold down the space bar and then click and drag to reposition that selection exactly where I want it over the eye. So we'll go for something like that. Now that's one eye selected. I need to select the other eye. So to add to the selection, we hold down the shift key and then using the elliptical marquee tool, I'll drag out another ellipse. The only difference now is I can't constrain it as a perfect circle because that shift key is being used to add to the selection. So I need to do this as best as I possibly can. Uh, go for around about there. And again, use that space bar to reposition it to around about there. Now, once I have the selections in place, I'm then going to press Q on my keyboard to go into quick mask mode. And what happens here is anywhere that's got a red overlay over the top of it is what isn't being selected. Any area that's completely clear is what is being selected. So we can see here that we do have the eyes selected, but we do have extra bits here like the top and bottom eyelids. So we need to remove those from the selection. We can do that very easily in Quick Mask. I'm just going to get a brush, making sure that I have a black foreground color. And let's just make sure that the hardness isn't at zero. We'll harden it up just a little bit around about 35, 36, something like that. And then just zoom in a little bit closer. And now I can brush over the top to add more red overlay, which is telling Photoshop not to have these areas here included in my selection. So I'll just do the top and bottom on that eye. Come over to the other eye and just repeat that as well. That bit there and this bit just at the top, like so. So now if I just zoom out, come out of Quick Mask by pressing Q, we can see now that we've changed the selection so that those marching ants are only directly on the eyes. Now that we've got that, I'm going to come over to the adjustment layers over in the top right hand corner of the screen and I choose one on the bottom row second in from the right called selective color. Now when I do that, what you'll notice is absolutely nothing happens. We have added that adjustment layer. We've also got this layer mask and if we just look at that layer mask, you can see here that all of it's black except for the white areas over the eyes. So whatever we now do, it's only going to colorize or brighten the eyes. The way we can now do that, first of all, to brighten them is by changing the blend mode of this adjustment layer. And I'm going to take this here from normal all the way down to color dodge. The great thing is that in modern day Photoshop, as we put our cursor over each of these blend modes, we see in real time what effect that's having on the area that we've actually got the selection in. Now, the one I want here is color dodge. You can see when I go from normal, to color dodge, it brightens the eyes up quite a lot. Now, if that's too much for you, the great thing is this being an adjustment layer, we can tone it down by using opacity. Well, I'm gonna leave this at 100% so it's nice and clear on your video. So that's already just brightening the eyes on the one layer, but it doesn't stop there. We can now actually go to the properties over here for this selective color adjustment layer. If I just click on the little icon there and we see these sliders. Now you might find that by default, when you first do this, that the color section here is set to reds. But for this to work, we need to change it to neutrals. So just click on the word reds to open up the menu and come to the bottom here where it says neutrals. Now we can change the color using the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black sliders. Now the way this is set up, if I actually want to add more cyan into the eyes, I drag this top marker here, away from the word cyan. You can see there that the cyan is now being added into my friend Keith's eyes. Also, if I want to add more magenta into the eyes, I would take that pointer and drag it away from the word magenta. Now, the way this also works is on one side we have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, but on the other side here, although we can't see it written down, 
are the opposite colours. So we have red, green and blue on these top three sliders. So if I want to add red into the eyes, I would take the top slider and drag it over to the left hand side. So we can use these sliders here to change the colour of the eyes or just boost the colour in the eyes really subtly just with a few little movements like so. So a little bit more cyan, let's go for a little bit more magenta in those eyes there and a bit more yellow. So that's how we can brighten and colour the eyes. Now at the bottom we also have the black slider and we can use that to either brighten or darken the eyes. If we want to add more contrast or lower the contrast in the eyes, what we would need to do is come back up to the neutrals and change it to blacks. And then we can just use the black slider right at the very bottom. So if I drag to the left, it decreases the contrast. If I drag to the right, it increases the contrast. Now the last thing to kind of point out in here is at the very bottom we've got these two words, relative and absolute. Now I'll put a link in the description so that you can read the detailed description of what these are. But basically all we need to remember here is relative will give us a much more subtle adjustment, whereas absolute will be a bit punchier. Let me just show you what I mean. If I zoom in on Keith's eyes, and I'm going to take the cyan slider here, and I'm going to move that over to the left to really boost up the reds in the eyes. So this is taking it way too far. But look how red the eyes are using relative. You might notice this now. If I change it to absolute, you should see a little bit more punch. So we go from absolute to relative, absolute to relative. Let me just zoom in just a little bit closer, see all the pixels there now. So absolute, you can see it brightens it. Relative, it's a little bit more subtle. So you might want to always think about leaving it in the relative setting to get the best out of the eyes there. But let's just bring that back down. Now something else I like to do in Photoshop as well to really help give the eyes a bit of lift is an extra bit of sharpening. So what I'm going to do first of all then is I'm going to come down to add a new blank layer, but I'm going to hold down the Option key on Mac, Alt key on Windows and click. That will then bring up the new layer properties and I'm just going to call this one Sharpen and then we'll click OK. Then I'm going to come over to the toolbar and choose the Sharpen tool and then in the options bar at the top of the screen, by default the strength here will probably be set at around about 50. I'm going to take that down to 20. Now because I'm also using a blank layer where there are no pixels in, which is going to be great for keeping the file size down, I also need to make sure that I put a little tick where it says sample all layers. And we're going to get our money's worth, let's make sure we put a little tick in the protect detail tab. Now the way this works is pretty much like a, like a spray can, if you hold down a spray can nozzle and spray in one direction on a wall, but keep that nozzle sprayed down and just keep going back over it, Every time you go back over it, it's going to build up more and more paint. That's the same as what it happens really in the sharpen. When you brush over, it applies a bit of sharpening. If you don't lift off, you keep it pressed down, just keep going over, you're going to add more and more sharpening. That's why I like to keep the strength down to around about 20. So what we'll do now then, we'll zoom in. I can increase or decrease the size of the sharpening tool here using the right and left square bracket keys. And I'll press down and just circle around. So there's one two, three, and I'll probably go over this more than I ordinarily would, but just so that you can see it in the video. Now, once I've done it three times on one eye, I'll then just move over to the other eye and repeat it. So I press down and go around one, two, and three. All right, so let's just zoom out. So now then, let's just put both of these layers here into a, into a group. Uppermost layer is highlighted. I'll hold down the Shift key to include the selective color adjustment below. Go to the flight menu in the top right hand corner, choose new group from layers. We'll call this one eyes and now we can go before, after, before and after. Now just one extra little thing to mention about the sharpen tool is that as you're applying that sharpening, if you do notice that the colours are starting to be affected in the area that you're sharpening, just go to the options bar and change the blend mode to luminosity. That way when you're applying the sharpening, you will not affect the colour. But there you go, that's just a really quick technique showing you how you can just use one layer to brighten, colorize, and add contrast to the eyes, and an extra little thing to do with this sharpening. So if you've liked it, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click on the subscribe button, because as you know, it's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But for now, that's me, I'm done. I'll see you in the next video.